Broadcasting live from our Columbia, Maryland headquarters, they are founders of Hard Money Bankers, REI 360, and are international bestsellers with their book, The Whiteboard. Here are Jason Balin and Chris Haddon. Hey everyone, Chris Haddon, Jason Balin, co-founders of hardmoneybankers.com and REI360.net. Today we are discussing the puzzle of human psychology and business. Uh, yeah, this is a common topic that comes up in our office on a regular basis, and we've bullet pointed maybe uh, four or five different things. It's kind of a, a, a funky title and something that you may not think about, you know, psychology of business. And what we're going to try to do is gear this towards the general business population, but try to have some specific examples in our real estate investing business because yep. a lot of our followers, a lot of our subscribers, and a lot of you viewers out there right now are real estate investors. So we want to make sure it's uh, you know applicable to you. Okay, so there's there's a number of there's a number of different topics, and these things come up a lot. We read about it, like it's very like hum, uh, business is done by humans, and so our psychology has a tremendous effect on the outcome. Um, I would say that most of human psychology effect on outcome is on business is probably negative, and then there's a couple positives too, and that's very much open to interpretation. It's a complicated subject. Like when you're talking about instinct, like Jason was saying before. There are like, would everyone operate better in business as a robot or as a human? And that's that's a tough call. I mean, on the positive side, you have you have instincts and like, and you know, things that a human can pick up that that a machine couldn't with data. But on the other side, there's lots of negatives. There's a lots of human emotion type stuff that that cause negative business outcomes. So we're gonna dive into a few of them. Yeah, so we'll start with uh, some Warren Buffett stuff, because you know we're big followers of Warren Buffett with his book, and if you ever read any of his stuff or heard him talk, he talks about Mr. Market. And you know what Mr. Market is, is pretty much just, you know the the ups and the ups and downs of market cycles and and market trends that don't really have too much of an impact of what that actual business is doing inside mm -hmm. the stock market. It's just more of what trends of what people think. Oh, I'm diving in. I'm going to buy this stock yeah. for this reason, or I'm about to dive in to buy a stock at at, thi at this reason. And you know, he, he as a value investor, that's the term that he uses. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care what that chart says. He's going right. to underwrite that business. Um, as a real estate investor, you can underwrite your particular real estate opportunity based on a lot of other facts than what other people are doing. <laughs> yeah, so a, a very recent and good example is Britain's exit from the European Union and how that immediately affected the markets. Now, nothing has happened with any companies yet. There, there, <laughs> nothing has happened. And I would also say that people don't even know the economic outcome of that of Britain leaving, yet the whole market sells off as a huge drop. It's 100% psychologically based. It's like, oh my god, the sky's falling, let's sell. And all of a sudden, prices are dropping on everything. And it, it's illogical. Exactly. Right? It's not based on real data. It's not based on real business. It's just based on people freaking out. Exactly. I want to talk about some real estate oriented stuff in this space. We're going to talk about that a little bit later uh, in the show. Cool. Uh, we have a few other interesting topics that we want to talk about, but just Hang tight with us for a few more minutes until we get until we get to that because I think you'd be really interested in my insight on that. Cool. Yeah, we'll come back to that related to real estate. Um, okay. Here's a good story we've been talking about recently. It has to do with a uh, a friend's wife. She recently got promoted. Um, works for a big company, W two job. You know, doing well. Um, recently got promoted, and so during the transition period, she's doing her previous job and she's doing her new job at the same time. Right. It, it, she has a big workload. It's not going to be like that forever, and there's a period of uh, transition that's very difficult. And it's absolutely crushing her psychologically and even physically. And think about it. Like you're, What she's doing in, the, in a day is talking to people on the phone and typing on a computer. Right? Maybe she's doing talking on the phone a little more and typing on the computer a little more. Yet, whatever's going on there is causing her to have serious nervous breakdowns. Um, and I'm not laughing, and she's getting through it. Even physical reactions, even laying on the floor, even like having fits of crying and stuff. But if you just break it down to the uh, the robot sense of it, she's just doing this and this and this. Yeah, and this. I think how is that affecting her that much? Yeah, and I think that managing stress and the psychology on that is everybody falls in. You know, any good employee or any good entrepreneur or anybody good at working at their specific trade, they take pride in it and they care so much about it. And that's the reason why emotions and psychology much. and stress are kicking in. And that's okay. You know, like that, it's a good feeling. It's it's better to have that feeling that, and we're going to talk about the management of that feeling, but it's better to have that feeling than being like, ah, eh, I don't give a crap. 
you know, right, ty type, of, apathy would be worse. Ty ty type of feeling. So on one side of it, you know, kudos for really, really caring about your job or caring about your trade or caring about your clients and your customers and things like that. That's super important. But at the same time, you got to manage up here. It's not the end of the world, whatever that case is. Your emotions are kicking in and that's fine. Um, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs say, oh my God, the, you know, the sky's falling out or, or this, you, this is like the biggest issue I've ever had in my business before. I'm not gonna be able to overcome it. Like I just wanna quit, blah, blah, blah. Those are feelings that as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, we all have on a regular, yeah. regular basis. But I promise you the majority of them are just minor speed bumps. And you know, as you work through them, you become stronger. Right, and sure. you know, and that kind of leads us to our next bullet point related to, and there's two sides of this bullet bullet point, but you know, for instance, you know, in our business, we know a lot of, and a lot of these guys are successful real estate investors that all of a sudden something in their real estate investing portfolio starts going sideways, and it's similar to this employee example, but something goes sideways and they just can't sleep, they can't eat, they can't do anything, they just, they just. I don't even know if, it's not even the word stress, it's more than that. Like every day it's the all they think about and they cannot move on to more productive things because they have one speed bump kind of in the way that yep. takes up all their attention. And we'll call that one extreme. So over here you have a person, like Karen just said, making a mountain out of a molehill and letting this one or two or three problems, whatever it may be, but I mean it's regular stuff, completely consume them to the point that they can't do anything productive. On the other end of the spectrum, which is also a place you don't want to be on the extreme end of either one. But on the other one is your person who ignores problems that should be addressed. And that's not cool either. You can't ignore business problems that need to be managed. And then here somewhere in the middle is your flow, your equilibrium of like you have to deal with things in the right way, you know, manage it professionally and properly, but you can't let it kill you, you can't let it consume yeah. you. That's where you gotta be in the middle, not either one of these extremes. And, and that's tough. Um, it's a tough thing to do. I mean having a loan portfolio of you know 30 million bucks, a couple hundred loans, there, there are defaults and situations that need to be managed. Um, as time goes on, that gets easier to deal with. There, there's certain things that pop up, and maybe more so in the past when you're just getting used to it, where it really affects you a lot. Yeah. I mean, these are, are manageable things, and they work themselves out, or whatever, whatever. There's always gonna be X amount of them. So I think about this a lot. There's always gonna be X amount of them if you have a portfolio of 200 loans, right? Exactly. And when a problem, when a problem comes up, it's already, it already came up, right? It, it's in the past. The problem already exists, right? You know, you, you can you can work in the future so you don't run into that problem again. But at this point, that's a past event. So now it's doing the productive things to to you know to clean it up. So like Chris was said, the problems here, ignoring the problem is a huge issue. Over stressing, over analyzing, not being able to sleep because that problem occurred is the other extreme, right? Right. So it's it's just it's, it, it, it's man it's managing it's managing it the correct way. And I know some people might think, well, yeah, dummy, that's common sense. But you know, there's a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, real estate investors that just overanalyze things too much on this side, or just say, oh, it'll just work itself out, which it's not gonna work itself out, I promise you, on, on this side. Cool, so that kind of leads us to our final bullet point of what we wanna talk about related to market, the real estate market, the psychology of the real estate market, what people are saying out there of the market's so hot, or the market sucks, or whatever the case is, there's always opportunities in any market. For any business, any real estate investor, it, it, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, right now, some of the markets we operate in is, is, is towards the top, right? You know, there's, and the reason, you know, it's, it's towards the top, there's a lot of buyers that are flooding into the market. It's hard to find good, you know, better, better, better deals. So there's pros and cons of this. You know, obviously if the market's towards, towards the top and, you've, and you can find, you know, a, a pretty decent deal, you know chances are that that's gonna sell pretty darn quickly. Right, things are move, things are moving quickly, um, and it's fine. On the other end, you know, a lot of real estate investors don't want to invest in real estate when the market's at the complete bottom. But hey, if you're at the complete you bottom, should. all you do, all you can do is is go up. So I wouldn't. I, we've never really been too concerned related to market conditions on a on a macro broad level. We just adjust our buying formula, our lending formula, mm -hmm. all of our investing formulas based on where the market is. Maybe you don't invest as much as you, as much now because you can't find that many good properties or maybe, you know, there's some rental properties that you can find right now that you couldn't find before. So, the rule of thumb just like Warren Buffett would say in business and the Mr. Market is everything you hear in the news, the hype, this and that, 
you know, you need to use your own instinct, you need to use your brain, and you need to use real data that you're compiling yourself so you can make an educated decision if this is the right investment property or if it's not the right investment property to, for you to buy. Yeah, across the board, like take a, take a hard look at yourself during certain situations and see if maybe your emotions are running away f with you and making your decisions for you. Like maybe some great stuff is happening so your ego gets all pumped up and you think you're Superman and you can do anything. Great, great dangerous. line. Dangerous. That's, that's dangerous. And on the other side of things, is your, uh, are your emotions as your psychology preventing you from getting into opportunities? You worry too much, you can't you know, let go emotionally, whatever it may be, it prevents a lot of people from getting into stuff. So there's definitely you know, extremes in that. And all good things to look at, not an easy problem to solve, something we all deal with day to day. And I think the people who can do it the best are gonna be in the best position for success. Yeah, the ones that can take emotion out of investing because emotion has no right to be in the term investing, you know, with, with any of this stuff. We talk to real estate investors all the time about that. It's don't, don't renovate this house based on what you want. You're not living in this house. Figure out what this person did over here who sold for a premium and copy that identically. <laughs> and Warren Buffett's the same way when he invests in businesses. If, if, it, doesn't, if it doesn't meet his buying formula, it doesn't work. It's yep. that simple. It doesn't matter how much he wants that deal. It doesn't matter anything else besides, the, you know, like you said, the discipline of meeting that, that formula. Yeah. Um, one quick ask. If you guys could please comment, let us know one situation where your emotions affected you in business and how you dealt with it. Yeah. We'd appreciate that. Let, let us know what you think about yeah, it's, it. It's a big thing that comes up regularly. And, Every day. and I haven't heard too many people talking about it. And you know, we, this is a topic that we came up with recently and I'm glad we brought it up on the show today. And, we'll, and, we'll and I, revisit yeah, we can expand on this sure. more in, 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 never the, ending. in the future. <laughs> so as always, like, comment, share, subscribe, review. Like Chris said, uh, we really appreciate any comments that you have. We want to continue to do these shows for you on a regular basis. Thanks again, guys. Take care.